Coitado. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I see the
Messiah for that you know, wonderful administration earlier and then the, for the hymn and uh, the sister that led the prayer, that was fire prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. The media team, the drama, everybody, and every one of you that are in service today, we're so honored to have you guys. We are not taking your presence for granted. Thank you so much for coming in. Before we, we can sit down. Before we proceed in this uh, mess, this sermon or the message today, please I want to plead with you guys to sit down during this message and write something, jot something down. I want to plead with you. Do not go around at this time. Um, but before we start the message, I got a, a bad news yesterday. It was not a good one. And you know, when I say bad news, some of us would think because somebody died. Yeah. When someone dies, it's a bad news. But sometimes there are bad news that are worse than that. Why the life of a man is more than the whole world. And that's why Jesus came. But we have also bad news. Because somebody can die and they are already going to heaven. Is that a bad news? No. no. It's good news. Even though they leave this world to go to the one that, there will be, they, that it will be eternity and they live with God. The only bad news is when somebody dies and we know that they are not going to go to heaven. Or we think. That's the worst thing. If someone passes away and we are sure that they are going to have why should it be bad news? Praise the Lord. I will say we don't sorrow like unbelievers. I was trying to read um, in the afternoon before this bad news came, so there were, there were many bad news. I was reading and I had that, I read Starbucks will close 400 stores in the next few weeks or months. Picture those 400 stores, three people work there, minimum. That is 1,200 people jobless. And while we were, I was trying to get something for my family yesterday in Martins, one of the prominent uh, staff of Indiana University of Pennsylvania from the Office of International Education met with me and said, Yomi, have you had? I said, I had heard what? She said, IUP. I said, but IUP is resuming this for. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, but we don't have any student coming yet. I said, oh my God. He said, because the visa offices are not open. I said, Jesus, I'm not sure. That doesn't mean people will not show up, but they're going to be very, very small. That's not the bad one. That's the good part. He said, IUP is letting go 180 professors. I said, what? He said, I don't even know we have that much. In our own world, 180 professors and 270 non-academic staff called non-faculty members. 180 plus 270 is over 400. If my memory does not fail me, I may be wrong. Brethren, Airbnb is one of the best flourishing business before COVID-19, after COVID-19 struck, hell has, has been let loose with Airbnb. And I can go on, on and on of many companies that are filing for, the, for bankruptcy and individual. This thing is more than we think. I just want you to know. Psalm 126, West Joy read, that's one say, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, while I then that dream it. Then, I, when, then our mouth was filled with laughter. As we are sitting down, brethren, I want you to pray. And intercede for yourself. For God's people. For all the people that have lost their job. All the businesses that are closed. Jesse Penny is a Christian home business. Just for your information. They pay tight. I want us to pray. That God will turn away. We turn around our captivities. Nationally. In the United States. In Ghana. Nigeria. South Africa, in Canada, in UK, in Italy, in Netherlands, in you know all over the world, nations of the world, our businesses, our churches, our finances, people that have lost their jobs, people that have lost their home, people are selling their homes, they have lost their homes. Brethren, I want you to cry. This is not a joke. It's just one prayer. 
Some of us may think of what we are praying for. The Bible says pray without season. Brethren, pray and intercede. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I remember the fear on the face of that lady. She said that we don't know who is going to be involved. Lord, we cry. The word of God says when the Lord turn, 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 turns again the captivity, captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream it. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Lord, please in your mercy, let our mouth be filled with laughter again. Amen. Father, turn around our captivity. In this nation, United States of America. In Ghana, in Nigeria, in South Africa. In Uganda, in Egypt. In UK, in Netherlands, in China. Lord, in India. In Father, Canada. Lord, in Israel. In North Korea, in South Korea. In Germany. Lord, in the nation, all the nations of the world. Turn around our captivities. Turn around our businesses, oh God. Turn around financially and spiritually our churches. Oh God, businesses that are owned by your children. Lord, our families, our job. Lord, many are losing their job. Many are losing their homes. We pray, please, in your mercy, turn around our financial captivity, our spiritual captivity. In the name of Jesus, turn around our churches, oh God. Turn around our finances in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 This thing that I told you was um, it's not a self I'm just hearing yesterday. I already was, you know, thinking and knowing this for a long time. And that was why I announced a few days ago, a few weeks, few, you know, like about two weeks, that the last Sunday of this month. We are going to be having COVID post COVID 19 benefits, financial benefits. If you are not here in church, I encourage you to join online. We're going to have some discussion and then it's going to be question and answer time. That day, it will, the church will not close at one. If you, are, if you are tired, you are free to go. Because we are going to answer questions and talk. Everybody will share ideas. What can we do? Brother, you better prepare. I am telling you. We are better start to prepare. The jobs you have, this is not the time to spend all the money. It had a hard time to save. And I'm not telling you to put all your money in the bank. Because in 2008, the economy crash. We might have the repeat of that. Keep some cash at home. Some of the principles we are going to learn. Things we can invest in small, small right now. $17, $20. That we can keep and preserve our financial future. If you think you are spiritual, more than us, no problem. I hope you know that um, Joseph told them what to do to save 20% in Egypt. No problem. If you think you are spiritual, this thing we're saying doesn't make any sense. I'm giving you biblical principles. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, this morning, by the grace of God, we are starting a new series. I want to encourage you to pay attention, judge, and open your heart. And then don't miss this series. If you are not in church next Sunday, it's okay. But make sure you connect online so that you don't miss this series. Why? We need this at this time. Brethren, I'm begging you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not miss this service today and next week. And even the one we are doing and the one throughout the month of July. In the month of July, we'll be talking about the seven spirit of God. If you are not in church, it's so perfectly fine. Connect online. You don't know one wisdom, one idea that God will use to change your life. Pride is the problem with many of us. We are not humble. We felt that we, that we can't get anything from any other person. And that is pride. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. This morning we are starting a new story called, called The Three Kinds of Wisdom. I'm trusting God to help us finish this part one so that we don't have to carry over to part two. But if we have to, good. My wife was telling me, you know, by, you know, by God, she said, don't rush this stuff. Take your time. Three kinds of wisdom. We have read Proverbs chapter 4 that we have, you know, earlier. I will read some of the verses again. Um, so for clarity and understanding, three kinds of wisdom. Hear my, hear my children the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my Lord. When I was my father's son, tender and only one in the sight of my mother, 
He also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. See what the word of God says, let your heart retain my words. Let your, keep my commandments and leave. Who was, right, who was the author of the book of Proverbs? Huh? Mm, yeah, you know, I will have different answers. Solomon. And I don't think any answer will be wrong. You Solomon. said? Solomon. Solomon. Two people. Any other person? Um, David Maybe part of it. Yeah. This particular one was Solomon. He said, when I was my father's son. It's okay. But that's, Solomon was not the writer. The Holy Spirit. True, true Solomon. Father, we thank you for this morning. We commit this uh, the, the, the sermon into your hands. We pray that you open the eyes of our spirit, Holy Spirit. We hand over everything to you. Lord, we pray for the tongue of fire, for the for the Father, for the for the spirit of understanding. We pray that you open the spirit, eyes of our spirit and our minds. We pray that you will enlarge your word in our hearts Amen. and change our destiny, O oh God, with your word. Open the eyes of our spirit and our mind, Holy Spirit. Let Jesus alone be seen and glorified in this world. Open the eyes of our spirit and our minds. Amen. And Lord, help us to apply our hearts to wisdom. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Solomon said, I was my father's son. How can you be your father's son? Is that not a tautology? And was my father's son. Yeah, you are a man, so you are, father, you are your father's son. Why? You don't understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. A king in, in Israel, even if he has 100, 100 children, he will take a particular boy, he doesn't have to be the first, and give him to the tutors and governors that the Bible talks about, and said, train him in all the military, finances, marketing, every learning. When he has gone, they will, he will, they will take him away. For years, he will not come back to palace. After maybe five, ten years, and they come back, they bring him and say, Lord, uh, King, he is ready. So when King is going to pass away, that is the guy that's going to take over for me. That's the meaning of I was my father's beloved son. Mm -hmm. Solomon was not the first. But the father handed over the throne to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's flip this thing. There are many people all over the world. And sadly, even Christians that have the mindset that their success, their future, destinies, and even their lives depend on government, their education, degrees, job, family background, world economies, and etc. There are many people all over the world that find their identity in their job. So when they lose their job, they lose their identity. But our identity is in Christ. Amen. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life. The word, of God, the word of God tells you who you are. It's not about what you have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am more than conqueror. Amen. It doesn't matter what is going on. Greater is he that is in me, that is he that is living, that is in the world. That's God's word for you. I can do all things through Christ. That's, that's God's word for you. It does not matter what is going on. Do not look for your identity, your certificate, or your education, your diploma. Don't think, don't have the mindset of the people of the world. Unfortunately, many Christians have the same mindset. But for God's children, this is not supposed to be so. We belong to another kingdom. And operate with different laws and heavenly economy. Amen. We ought to have and operate different kind of mindset. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Talks about God and Jesus. He said, who has translated us. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. What's the meaning of translation? Like you remove a plant, as we did in agriculture. You remove a plant with some of the soil and go and transplant it into another environment. God removes us from the kingdom of darkness, the world system. The system that is controlled by what you get, the certificate education. And the way the world, the politics, the government decision. No, he translated us into his own kingdom. When you leave Ghana and move to the United States of America, the laws in Ghana doesn't apply here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The what is the okay, the currency of Ghana, Ghana cities. Am I correct? Yeah. You don't spend it here. Mm -hmm. If you bring Ghana city of 20 billion here, it's useless. Mm -hmm. Unless you are able to combat it. Mm -hmm. In the kingdom of God where we belong. The word of God and faith 
is what counts. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says, Be it unto you according to your faith. It is not your expertise, it's not your wisdom, it's not your degree. God doesn't care about your color or your sex or your gender. He cares about the word of God that you hold and your faith in him. Your faith in Christ first. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's own son. We have to operate by different mindset, different rules. In the world system, you don't pay tight. That's why we pay tight here. We operate by different rules. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the world system, somebody can offend you, you don't, you don't forgive them. In the kingdom, if you don't forgive, your prayer is answered and you will go to hell if you don't. We don't pray by different rules. We don't pray by the, thing, by the standards of the world. God doesn't operate with degrees here. Go and, go, and, go and look at the history in the Bible of many people that Jesus never went to school. It's not about, it's good to go to school, don't get me wrong. I went and I'm still going for my PhD. I want to be the first person to have a PhD in my family. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my own personal dream. But God stopped me some years ago and said, come here and serve. I'm one of the men, even though to some of us, the pastor is not good enough. I don't care about your thinking. There's only one man that has been good enough that have walked the surface of this earth. Only one man was perfect and upright and never prayed forgiveness. His name is called Jesus. Every other man is just a man. You're not better than any other person. You can sit down and condemn brethren and condemn anybody. It doesn't matter. In fact, the word of God says, before you remove the mold in your brother's eye, remove the log of wood in your own eyes. That's the scripture. I'm not, I'm not telling you what is not scripture. I have my own struggles, I have my own challenges, but I'm running my race to heaven. And I will, I will see you there. Amen. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what you think, you will see me there. Amen. My prayer is that you will make it there. Amen. Because I will make it there. Amen. We all pray by different kind of principles and laws. Let's go to the next stage. Just pray God will help us. Three kinds of wisdom. The word wisdom from the Greek word in the Bible is Sophia. And that's when, when you hear, when, when, if you name your child, your daughter Sophia, that's a good one. It's wisdom. Sophia. In the Bible sense, wisdom is knowing. I don't want to talk about epignosis. We learn about that. That's the highest kind of knowledge. Epignosis. The best part to take. When they met Jesus and said, you are not paying tithes, they said, go and put... Uh, go and throw net inside the river and then they got with money. How did he know that? Divine wisdom. It doesn't come cheap. We pull it out. It's deposited in every child of God. But you don't get it just by sleeping and waking up. You get it by pulling it up. And we're going to, dip, 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 you know, we're going to talk about the process of pulling it up. Let me ask you a question. Do we have gold deposits in the world? Yes. Gold. And diamonds. Yes. And all those, do we have the deposit? Yes. Massively oil and gas? Yes. How do we get them? You dig them up. Precious things are not, lying, are not lying on surfaces. God has put wisdom in the heart of every child of God, but you have to pull it out. Every one of us is naturally foolish, including myself. But you need God's wisdom, and it's inside you, but you need to pull it out by the Spirit, by prayer, by speaking in tongues. By study, by meditation. That's how we pull it up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sophia is outcome of having the ability to judge correctly and possess the best course of action. Based on knowledge and understanding. Watch knowledge and understanding. You have to first have knowledge, then understood that knowledge, then you move to wisdom. Based on knowledge and understanding that we have obtained. King Solomon received the most precious gift from God. The spirit of wisdom. The scripture indicates that there are many kinds of wisdom that we can experience. Let's read this. What is wisdom? I, I said it here one time by the Spirit of God. That wisdom is the correct application of understood knowledge. Correct application of understood knowledge. Okay, let's go up a little bit. Insight into reality. 
things that are like difficult, God give you insight into that. Insight into all learning and science. Insight into hidden things. That man does not know. You will see that this wisdom is not in you. I mean, it's in you by the possible. You, you cannot, you cannot exercise it on your own. That's what I mean. You have the potential of that wisdom, but you cannot exercise it on your own. Why? Because God wants us to depend upon his spirit every time. That's why he does not just allow you to exercise that wisdom every time. You will have to depend upon God by praying and asking for that wisdom. Did the Bible say, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. From God, I give it to all men and does not reprove. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Next, let's read this. Insight into reality and all learning. Leave it there, my dear. Thank you so much. I want to tell you the story that our daddy did not share many years ago. That's his pastor here at Deboe. He was writing his PhD in, 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 in mathematics. And for PhD in, in mathematics, they are going to give you a particular mathematical problem that have never been solved by any human being. And then they gave it to him. And after many, after he struggled for many weeks or months, he couldn't do so. He packed and said, I, I, I beg, I, I don't have to die because of it. I'm not doing any. I don't understand this stuff. Because it came about about one and eight, if I remember, one and eight simultaneous equations. And he doesn't know what to do. One morning he was worshiping and praying and meditating. The Holy Spirit said, Son, take that mathematical problem. He said, Lord, I cannot do it. Take it up. You know what? Divide the 108 mathematics equation that you get that cannot be solved into 54 54. He said, Do you remember what happened at SC? He said, uh -huh. Lord, what happened there? He said, I divided the rest into two. Uh -huh. That's not news. He said, Okay, now divide 54 here, 54 here. Start solving them differently. And after I solved them, they cancelled out and he got the answer. That's how he got the PhD. So that this wisdom cannot come from a man. That's divine wisdom. But it's in you. You gotta pull it out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some benefit of wisdom that we read in our text. Time will not permit me to read that text again. Next, let's flip it. Wisdom preserves verse 6 of Proverbs 4. Shall we read? I don't want you to take away. Can somebody read for us? Sharp, sharp. Proverbs 4, 6. Uh, because those verses, I need people to be reading it. I have my, you know, my time is far gone. Take her not. Uh-huh. And she shall preserve thee. She shall preserve thee. Don't forsake wisdom. What are we talking about? We are talking about wisdom of God here. Now, for if wisdom preserves. What is, what is preservation? If you don't want me to spoil, what do you do? Preserve you preserve it by keeping it in your freezer. In those days when our mothers were, were not having freezer, what did they do? They salt it up and, or roast or sun dried. Preserve. Wisdom preserve your life. But your part is you cannot forsake her. Every promise of God has your own part and his own part. Do not forsake wisdom. To read the word of God and say pay tight and don't pay is to forsake wisdom. To read the word of God that says you should serve God with all your strength in his kingdom, and you don't, is to forsake wisdom. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. I'll share a testimony here as well. Time will not permit me. I had a testimony of this wonderful woman of God. They were traveling from one corner of Nigeria to another in Africa. And then they saw that some people have they have caught lumba. That's trees, big ones to cross the road. And say, what's this? They were trying to carry the, the arm robber jump from, from the bush, you know, from the big bushes and trees and around. Four of them heavily, heavily armed. And they, start, they entered their car and, and sped off. Then they entered their own car and started running after them. And they were this close to their car. They, and there were about five of them in the car. They were all yelling, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Nothing happened. The arm robbers were pursuing them hard and were shooting so that they can stop. And then the wisdom of God is said, Why are you shouting? Tell me what you want. Tell the angels what you want to happen. They are here. Then he said, Angels, go and puncture their tires, Amen. puncture their gas tank, Amen. and turn the car, vehicle, into the bush. Hey. As soon as the war came out of mouth, hey. one of the tires went off. Oh! And then the driver lost control 
and they went inside the bush. When they came out and saw them, the gas tank has been punctured, the tire was punctured, four of them were dead. Wisdom preserve your life. Money cannot preserve your life at that time. Your degree will not will fail you at that point in time. If you count on your beauty, will fail you at that point in time. Wisdom, that's God's word. God's wisdom preserves life. Okay. Wisdom promotes to honor. Verse 8. Exalt her. Uh-huh. And she shall promote her. Exalt wisdom. And she will promote you. Promotion. Wisdom brings honor. Ornament of grace and crown in verse 9 will he give to you. Verse 10 say, let's read verse 10. Hear, O my son, uh -huh. and receive my saying, uh -huh. and the years of thy life shall be many. Wisdom lengthens your life. It leads you in the right path. Keeps your step in the right direction and present, prevents you from falling. That's in verse 12. Next slide. I wouldn't be able to get to where I'm going, but wherever we stop, we will continue. There are three kinds of wisdom. The wisdom of man, your own wisdom. The earthly wisdom, worldly one, and the devilish one. They are, they are the one, it's the same. The devilish, the demonic wisdom. And then, the highest one, the wisdom of God from above. Let's go to the next slide. Alright. Wisdom of man. Second Samuel, can somebody help me read? Second Samuel, 20, verse 22. Second Corinthians, Corinthians, another person. Second Corinthians, uh, no, first Corinthians 2, verse 4 and 13. Wisdom of man. Second Samuel 20. Uh, 20, 22. Then the woman went unto all the people in mm -hmm. her wisdom. Uh -huh. In her wisdom. In her wisdom. Not in God's wisdom. Okay, it's okay. That's just what we need. First, she was doing that in her own wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 13. And my speech and my preaching will uh -huh. not be. That my speech and my preaching persuasive words of God. will not be with the persuasive words of men's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of the power. Uh -huh. Verse 13. These things uh -huh. we also speak, uh -huh. not in words which man, man's wisdom teaches. We teach the word of God is not in words that man's wisdom teaches. Man has his own wisdom. How does that word wisdom come? It comes by your age. Sometimes. Experience. Personal thought and imaginations. Your education and learnings of the world can give you some kind of wisdom. And your experience of where, where you are brought up and all those stuff, that's your own wisdom. Well, what the word of God say? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 7. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own wisdom and your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Many of us have been directing our life with our own wisdom, our own thought and imagination and experience and education. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on, lean not, I didn't say, God, lean not on your own understanding. Earthly, worldly, devilish, Wisdom. James chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. James chapter 3, verse 14. 3, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Man. But if you have any bitter envy and self seeking in your heart, any bitter envy and self seeking, uh huh? Do not boast and lie against the truth. Don't boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend. That wisdom, it does not descend from above. But it's earthly. It's sensual and, sensual and what? Demonic. demonic. For, uh -huh. where, for where envy and self-seeking. Wherever you see envy, pride and self-seeking, people are seeking their own interest. It's a, it's a demonic wisdom. It's not from God. Yeah? For wherever envy and self-seeking exists, uh -huh. confusion and every evil thing is there. Confusion and every evil thing is there, yes. But the wisdom that is from above it, is... It's okay. That's 16. Have you, know, have you noticed that some people, when they want to get rich in Africa, they use their mother or their father or somebody to make money in Shua? What kind of wisdom is that? Demonic. demonic wisdom. They get the money, but that's the money, that's not the wisdom of God. Wisdom, the earthly wisdom comes from all kind of satanic, demonic, and earthly inspiration, thought, imagination, experience, and education as well. All kind of worldly politics, gimmicks, gimmicks and uh, 
craftiness of men. You know, some people can be telling you, if uh, you are blessed, uh, we are asked in their heart, they are saying, if uh, you are cursed. Uh. Yeah. They think they are wise. They think they are mocking you. Those are wisdom of demonic wisdom. We find them in church as well. Hmm. Education, I say, all kinds of worldly politics gimmicks, dog eat dog approaches that people use in the office. How can they for get that, that promotion? Go and hide that fire so that they put your name when they don't feel. Demonic wisdom. Have you not heard that people do that in the office? Dog eat dog. They pull you down. They feel, some, they will tell you that no man, you, you cannot. They said, there's one word they used to say. He said, uh, I've forgotten how to say that uh, uh, for one man to rise, another man must go down. Really? That's not the wisdom of God. No man is stopping you from going up. Don't, don't, be, don't, be, don't, don't take that wisdom. It's demonic, earthly, sensual. All kinds of national, tribal, racial, color, just like we're having today. It's earthly. It's worldly. It's demonic wisdom. It's sensual. Financial gender segregation and favorism and sentiment. We have in the church a session of married people. A session of the rich. A session of people that have green cards. And all kinds of segregations. People form parties. In God's church. Cliques of who belong to their own cliques. Earthly and demonic wisdom. It's not from God. All hypocrisies, manipulations. So you want thing and meaning another thing in your heart. You are all sensual, demonic, and worldly wisdom. None of God's children should, should operate that way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we will start refreshing this and then we will move to the wisdom of God. How do we get the wisdom of God? Three kinds of God's wisdom as well. Even that God's, God's wisdom is divided into three. One is Sophia, one is Sunesis, and one is Phronesis, the Greek. We'll take it from there next Sunday as the Lord help us. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, our general line, God bless you. I pray that God's wisdom again ascend us into your heart. And if you have been operating in man's wisdom and, and worldly wisdom, please repent and let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you and inspire you with divine wisdom, and it will change your life. We want to appreciate you for joining online and we hope we hopefully hopefully we'll see you again. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you.